What's good, YouTube? This video is going to be about when men approach you. Now, I got a comment from my man, JC, that's always in the comment section with some game. He told me to talk about how women penalize men who are nervous when they approach them, because I think I mentioned it in one of my lives or one of my videos, but I just glossed over it. I did a video about it maybe, I don't know, four years ago. It was one of the first uh, videos I did. Uh, but just for people who don't want to dig through 300 plus videos, we're going to talk about it again. Like, a lot of women want a man to be confident. A lot of women want a man to appear to be sure of himself and be assertive when he approaches her, right? And a lot of times a guy might approach a woman like I used to and damn near be whispering. <laughs> um, he, he, he appears to be very scared or very nervous or a little bit scared or a little bit nervous, but it doesn't always come off as confidence, right? Self-confidence. A lot of women assume that when, when a man is kind of subdued when he approaches her or apparently nervous, that the confidence he lacks is in himself or his own value, right? They then jump to a conclusion that either he is uh, not a worthy contender for some reason or another, or that he's not masculine. He's not alpha because he's not being assertive and, and what they consider to be bold, right? Um, sometimes nothing could be further from the truth. If a guy knows who he is and knows himself, He's he can be very confident in himself, but if he sees a beautiful woman or he sees a woman that he really cares about this interaction, he really wants to have a shot at talking to this woman. The confidence that he has in himself doesn't always uh, transfer. It doesn't always show through. And that's because you're a stranger and he has to figure out or hope and cross his fingers that in the few minutes or the few seconds that you talk to him, you see the values in him that he sees in himself. And most of the time, women make misjudgments about men their value, their worth, what they have to offer, what type of life they can bring a woman or assist a woman in cooperate and building. This is why 90% of women chase 10% of men because they misjudge the other 90% of men and then tell us that there are no good men. There are good men everywhere. The problem is 90% of women are trying to screw 10% of men or date 10% of men or marry 10% of men because they don't want to deal with men anymore, right? Or they don't see value in men who aren't in that 10%. They don't see value in men who don't act a certain way. If a man approaches you and he has no nervousness whatsoever, uh, he's just bold, he's just assertive, and he's completely unbothered by the interaction, it may seem like he's being confident in himself, but sometimes that's just a sign that he doesn't value you that much or women in particular. I've known a lot of insecure men who don't value women, but approach them boldly and with confidence and are immediately seen as high value or, um, or, or worthy of the time. When in actuality, they have self-esteem issues. They deal with depression. They are trying to fill their lives with pleasure. They are trying to compensate for the lack of love that they got in their childhood or the lack of love that they've received in their adult life uh, with the family relationships they built or the friendly relationships they built through the tip of their penis by screwing a bunch of women and feeling love for those moments when they don't have any real love to give a woman, right? A lot of these men who approach you with confidence aren't necessarily responding to what they believe they bring you uh, as a partner or a potential partner. They're responding to their disdain or their just uncaring nature for women. That's why they're so confident because they don't value women so much. Anything worth having is worth considering, worth caring about, right? If you want a job, that's a good job. You might feel like you're the best candidate for it. You might feel qualified. But when you get to that job interview, it's not about how you feel about you. It's about convincing the interviewer that you are qualified for the job, that you are the best choice for this job, right? Most people, if they want a job really bad, I don't give a damn if you went to school twice as long as you needed to. You're a little bit nervous when you get to that job, that dream job. You know why? Because you don't know if that interviewer will see in you what you see in yourself, right? It's not about you feeling incapable of doing the job. It's about convincing a stranger that you're capable of doing the job. And that makes you nervous. Anything that you want badly enough will make you nervous or the thought of not achieving it, not getting it, not realizing that goal will make you nervous. When a man wants love and he's searching for love, and he values love when he sees a woman that he finds to be intriguing or interesting or beautiful. The thought of not receiving love or catching it or acquiring it in some way, especially through the means of talking to this wonderful woman who he finds himself to be very attracted to, may cause him to be nervous. But it doesn't necessarily mean he's nervous because he's not good enough. It might just mean he's hoping that you're smart enough to give him an opportunity because he is serious. If he doubts anything, he doubts your ability to see through this moment and find value in him, values that he sees in himself. 
I used to approach a lot of women just to shake off the fear of, of, of approaching a woman. And for a time, it was very difficult to approach a woman and, and even hold my voice tones, you know, exercise a proper tonality when speaking to a woman. I remember when I first started talking to women when I was a teenager, I had this thing where my voice would almost disappear. It's like a frog was in my throat every time I wanted to talk to a woman. Now, I've always had super high confidence, super high self-esteem. Always. I've never had to convince myself that I was worthy, good enough. Uh, I fit the bill. Like I've always believed in who I was. Right. I come from a uh, strong man. Uh, my big brothers always told me I was I was good enough. I always felt like I was good enough. My mom always spoke power and, 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 and life over me. So I, I didn't have those issues about not believing in who I was. But I always had issues with approaching women and then trying to make sure that I didn't let the fact that she probably didn't know all these great things about me because I was a stranger get in my way. And so it would be like a frog in my throat. I would talk low. Women would be like, what? <laughs> what do you say? Huh? Say that again? They'd be disgusted because I came up to them and I didn't have confidence. When really, if you just see me walking around or amongst people, I was one of the most confident people you run across. Right. Uh, and it wasn't about me again, not believing in myself. It was about me doubting whether or not she would see in me what I saw in myself as a stranger. She doesn't have a clue about who I am. She doesn't know if she should be interested in me or not. She has no idea who's in front of her right now. So am I her type? Is my skin complexion the right skin complexion? Is my height the right height? Is my build the right build? Like, how is she judging me? I don't know. So now I'm nervous because I don't know what criteria I'm supposed to be meeting. All I know is I see a beautiful woman who's a little bit intimidating and I want to talk to her and I'm looking for a relationship and I'm hoping she's looking for the same things. So many things are going through my mind, but none of it is. You're not good enough, Kevin. Go over here and whisper to this girl until you make a fool out of yourself. She turns you down and you go home without the phone number. That wasn't what it was. It was just me not knowing if a stranger uh, could make a snap decision about who I was and be correct. So to JC's point, a lot of women often uh, penalize a man for not uh, appearing to be super bold, super assertive when he talks to him. But sometimes, again, that boldness, that assertiveness, that intrusive nature that a man might might uh, show and let peek through when he's talking to you or when he's approaching you isn't indicative of his value. It's indicative of the lack of value or the lack of concern he has about the result of the interaction. If a man just sees a woman as a hole to stick it in, when he approaches her, he is super confident. He has nothing to fear because there are other holes to stick it in. He's not going to not find a hole to stick it in. That's just how those men feel about women. Sex is abundant. There's no reason to fear that if this opportunity doesn't work, I won't find another woman to have sex with. However, if a man sees you and specifically is really interested in you and thinks about how you might be as a lover or as a, a girlfriend or as a partner and would hope to have a wife as beautiful as you, which is what we're normally responding to. If he thinks there's more riding on this interaction than sex, then he might be a little bit nervous. You can actually know how confident or not confident a guy is based on how he approaches you. I've been terrified to approach a woman but I've never had confidence issues at all. It was never terror in who I was. It was terror in what she might assume of me. So many women get in this comment section after they watch these videos and there are hundreds of them and they talk about how lucky my wife is, right? Now, again, I'm lucky to have my wife as well. Uh, so it, it's a fair exchange here, uh, but they talk about how lucky my wife is. But a lot of these, these same types of women are the types of women that if I would approach them would have at some point seen me as either a nice guy or someone who lacked confidence because they misjudged what real confidence looked like or they misjudged when it was appropriate to assume you were looking at a man's confidence. Knowing the result of my work, knowing the result of my life, knowing how people have been affected by me, you can look and say, oh, your wife is lucky. I would love a man like you, but a man like me has probably passed you, has probably talked to you, has probably attempted to speak to you. And because you assumed he wasn't confident or you assumed he was a nice guy, you didn't give him a shot. Now, I'm not complaining. I had a lot of success in approaching women, just like I had a lot of failure. But the point is, those who didn't want to talk to me more often than not thought I wasn't confident in me when I really just cared about the interaction and I was really, really interested in finding a wife early. Again, ladies, always remember how you handle the things and the people that you actually care about and pressing or setting a tone with or building a reputation with or a rapport. Think about how you handle those things and people from job interviews to first impressions. Versus how you handle people that you don't find any value in whatsoever. 
people you don't want to work with, people you don't want to date, people you don't want to talk to. Think about the difference in how you feel around those people, the people who you find to be insignificant. And that's exactly what you're witnessing most of the time when you're talking to a guy who doesn't appear to care at all about the interaction that's happening. I say all that to say this. I'm not trying to bash men who are confident or bold or, or, or just throw caution to the wind because there are decent men who are out there like that. But if a guy appears to be very, very good at approaching women, it's probably because he approaches a lot of women and the result of those approaches just doesn't mean a lot to him. Most decent men aren't getting a lot of practice. They're not approaching droves of women, sleeping with droves of women, throwing droves of women away after those interactions, having droves of casual relationships. So every new interaction with a human being means something to them. So they might be a little bit nervous. That doesn't always mean they lack confidence or they're not valuable. That's foolishness and that's ignorance on your part to assume of a person that they might not believe in themselves just because they're a little bit nervous when they approach you. Because you've been nervous doing shit that mattered and you are also a valuable person. Anyway, uh, I hope this helps. This, I'm just starting a conversation. This is just an idea. Again, there are confident men who are also good men. I'm not saying that every confident man is a jerk, but I'm just saying that you need to be very careful before you decide or, or to, to dismiss a man just because he doesn't appear to be a, a master at uh, approaching women or speaking to women. Because most great men I know don't talk to a lot of women, so they don't get enough practice and they're not as seasoned at it. And so they're a little bit nervous and they jumble a lot of those interactions, but they're great people. They're great conversationalists. They're brilliant minds. They're wise men. They care about the communities. They actually want love. There are a lot of great men who just don't spend a lot of time talking to women, so they're not as good at it. Stop dismissing these men as betas or weak or nice guys. That's wrong and it's stupid. That's why a lot of y'all ain't found a good man, because you haven't responded to good qualities. Anyway, now I'm going on something else. Um, that's all I got for now. Follow me at KFIC24 on Instagram. I'll get with y'all later.